Welcome to another episode of Will's Personal Development Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how I invested in my first choice of YouTuber as a fitness coach and was it worth it? My review of this guy and his coaching and if the three months of coaching I paid for uh, is worth it for you to in- invest in and you know just specifically this coach and his coaching and if it was worth it and then I'll t- also touch on just generally speaking if fitness coaching is worth it. Now I think this is really relevant because health is a key pillar to success and personal development. If you're healthy you have more energy if you look good you're probably also healthy and strong and you attract the right people that you want into your life. So there's a lot of reasons for health. I mean, that's obvious, so we're not going to belabor that. But basically what I did was I was like, you know what? I've been following this YouTuber for years. And, you know, out of all the fitness YouTubers I follow, I think if I had to choose anyone, I think I want coaching from him first. And while it was pricey, it was about like six fifty. Um, I realized it's now or never. You know, I've been following this guy for, you know, almost 10 years, just, you know, listening to free content online, and it's about time. Let's see if it's worth it. Uh, let's see if, you know, if I don't do it now, when, am I, I going to procrastinate for another 10, 20 years before I en- end up getting anything? So I figured it was it was about time I invested to see what it was worth because before then, I had mostly used a bunch of free content on YouTube, which is helpful, but it can also be kind of overwhelming because there's so much of it. And then I bought, you know, a few eBooks and, and, you know, very affordable programs here and there that just give you like workouts from, you know, top YouTubers like Jeff Nippard and so forth. Uh, and then that's about it. I just I try to figure it out on my own. Oh yeah. And then the, the other big investment I think I made was CrossFit. So I did that for five years and the monthly membership is not cheap. It's about like 200 a month. Um, I think I had a, I found like a slightly more affordable uh, plan. So it was like an annual plan for like 160 a month, but it's still not cheap. I mean, that's around the rate of a luxury gym. And, you know, for me, and I, I've touched on that for many years. I did that for various reasons. Um, if you check out my previous podcast episodes on CrossFit or my uh, blog posts or YouTube videos. I can I, I go into more detail about that. But the point being, um, before this current investment, that was my biggest one. And, you know, I, I did that for just, you know, as an experiment as well. So was it worth it? Uh, just, you know, as a fan of upfront conf- conclusions, uh, I don't think it will be worth it for you. So I wouldn't recommend you take the same coaching with the same person. And I'll explain why. I think it was still worth it for me. And that was despite the things I didn't like about it. And because I was, turns out I was still such a beginner in certain ways that despite it being not the best coaching, I still learned a lot. So I really think that you can get a lot more. And so let's go into detail as to who this guy is and what I learned and why I think you're probably better off finding someone else for cheaper who will invest more time and attention into you. So um, I've already hinted at the main reason, which is, you know, time and attention. Turns out what you're getting for what you're paying for is essentially, uh, you know, a couple of text messages per week. Um, He will not video call with you. He will not jump on the phone with you. What he'll do is... He'll have you send a check-in text message every week on like a Monday. Um, And then you'll fill in like all the things that he wants in that check-in message. So for me, that was every day's macros, which you have to track. So all the macronutrients, uh, your weight every day, your average seven-day trailing weight, um, the max lift on all your major compound movements, and then your prescribed macronutrients for that week, which are 
carbs, proteins, fats, and uh, fiber. So that's what they he measures you on, um, and that's what you check in on. And then he'll adjust those every week. Uh, for me, a lot of times he kept it the same, but you know he may ad- it just depends on your body and your your goals. So for for that, you know that's the main text. And then you know he he said you get like access to him, and he's you know, readily available almost all the time via text message. Um, turns out he will get upset if you spend more than like two or three texts a week. So for the first like couple weeks, I would like send one question every other day. And it'd be usually something simple. It would be something you could answer in like 10 seconds. Like, is the form of this correct? Or can I use this machine exercise instead of the free weights because this gym doesn't have it or it's taken? And... That went well for a short while before he, all of a sudden he said, you know, this you're spending too much time. Please just consolidate all your questions and send them once with the check-in. So I started doing that as well. And it looked like, and I already sensed this earlier, um, but it looked like he was skimming my questions and then just giving really quick responses. So like sometimes the response would be just a few words, you know, all in lowercase. The, the grammar or spelling wouldn't be great. Um, but you know, just a quick response. And, um, sometimes, uh, you know, he would miss messages. So, you know, if I were to send two messages plus my check-in on a Monday, he may just do like a quick response telling me to adjust my fats down by five grams for the next week and then answer just one of the two questions. And, you know, I was really nice at first. So, I didn't mention it. I let it slide. So he wasn't aware. And then like towards later towards the end, like the last month, I started to bring it up more. And uh, yeah, then he would, you know, I think he got a little upset, maybe defensive about that. But yeah, then he was like, okay, I'll I'll try and answer these. Um, And then like sometimes he just got confused. Like one time I was like, hey, by the way, you missed the one question I asked on my check-in it's just a friendly reminder and I would send that on like a Wednesday or Thursday and this he responded with like like I said you need to consolidate all your questions and then I was like uh sure um I thought I was consolidating my questions I'd be happy to do that if you can explain and then his response to that was never mind it's fine and so you know a lot of these signs indicate that he was really busy he was you know, kind of rushing through and skimming these questions, not fully understanding them, and then jumping to conclusions and making response. That last one was a great example. He assumed that I was asking another question outside of Monday, and he didn't like that. Turns out I was reminding him about a question he once again missed on Monday, and then he's like, oh, never mind. So it was just kind of weird at certain points. And so uh, that was my experience with it. And um, it was it was just kind of like I, I I wondered like how many people is he juggling at the same time to be so busy? Uh, I mean, at a regular forty hour week job, that's eight hours a day. So assuming you're spending ten to let, let's be generous, thirty seconds a question, that's about you know two minutes of investment per week. Just how many other people is he juggling at the same time to fill up an eight-hour day? Now, I understand, you know, being a fan of his YouTube channel, um, he's uh, this guy. His name's uh, Goku Flex. His, it's, uh, his real name's Matt Keto, and I chose him because he's, you know, Asian. So he, I, I relate to him. He's one of the only Asians on the web that's, like, really jacked and muscular and, like, that you know, it's it, it's relatable. It's like oh, it's possible for an Asian. So I I, I looked up to him for a while and follow his content, and you know, it looks like you know he's he has to make YouTube videos too, and and you know market that, and then he has a, a baby. So you know he's taking care of his baby. But before I booked with him, I asked him, I know you have your baby. Will you have enough time to still have clients? And he said yes. I manage that so that. I always still have enough time for my clients. 
So that was that. And, and you know, it was just kind of strange. Um, uh, tor- towards the end, um, I actually asked him, you know, uh, about if he could give me proof that it was actually him. Because um, I know you probably you you probably have a lot of thoughts. One of them is, was it even him? Maybe this was outsourced to an Indian or something else. Uh, you know, someone in India. I mean, who's to say? Because there's no way of telling. It's just text messages from someone. And so I thought it was, you know, a reasonable question to ask. And I, I asked like two or three times. The first one or two times he ignored the question. But I was just like, you know, is it possible if you could send me some proof? And he ignored it. And then, you know, last week I asked him again. And he was offended by it. You know, uh, I got four WhatsApp messages because we, we do it through WhatsApp that were deleted and unsent. And then a fifth one that was like an audio message. And that was the first time he'd ever done audio with me. And it was just kind of like this message that, well, first it proved it was him because that was his voice, I could tell. But then second, he was just really offended. He was like, you know, he was saying how like, you know, if you if you want to question my authority or the credibility of my business, um, you know, you should have done that before booking a session with me and it it was just out of nowhere and that's one reason I prefer like live coaching or video coaching or phone coaching because so many things with tonality can be misinterpreted and my my question was very simple concise and it wasn't an accusatory thing and maybe he misread it and that happens all the time where misunderstandings happen just through text message but, um, you know, my question was simply, like, is, is, is it ridiculous if I could just get some proof it's you? And so, you know, he got he got pretty mad about that. He was like, yes, it is ridiculous. And, you know, I just left it at that. You know, was, I, I told him, you know, hey, I think there's a misunderstanding. I wasn't trying to offend you. You know, I, I just, you know, if you could have some empathy, I, I, I it's been three months. And all I've got are a few text messages. I didn't, it's easy to get suspect about whether it's actually you or not so you know I don't think he really understood that but he's like it's fine and that was that you know I didn't push it further because you know at that point it was the program was ending and I was like let's just let it go so that was my experience with him um as far as what I learned um I think like I mentioned um there's some key things I was doing wrong as a beginner that despite the you know lack of interactability and lack of really in-depth time with him that I think you should get from a real coach like you know if you're going to invest in a coach you need some real interaction some voice video calls or in-person coaching you can't just be this like quick text message thing so um put another way I I still learned a lot despite the issues with the coaching. And that's because I was still doing some very beginner things, which is funny because I'm a theory junkie. Like I know a lot of information about fitness, but it was all theory. I mean, there's theory and then there's action. And so, you know, there's, I think there's even some stuff that I pointed out to him that I don't know if this, you know, uh, Goku Flex knew, but, um, it just goes to show you, you don't have to know everything to really get results. So let me give you some examples. The first big lesson I learned was I need to hit like 160 grams of protein a day, like one pound per, uh, one gram per pound of my body weight. And I knew that it was obvious. It was already in my head. I, I'd known that for years. And yet my actions spoke a different story. You know, I, I was probably getting anywhere from 80 to 100 grams per day before this coaching happened. Now, why is that the case, even though I knew it? Because I did not weigh the importance of getting that in every day. And so I think that was a contributor to my gains and lacking. My gains were lacking. Um, You know, I had been training in CrossFit and in many other 
modalities for almost like the last 10 years on and off. Um, CrossFit, the last five years, was very consistent throughout almost every weekday. And while I do still think that part of the reason CrossFit didn't lead to the size gains I wanted um, was because of the type of exercises in CrossFit, which are more like very low rep ranges, I think another contributor was the way I was eating. And there was like a phase, like maybe a year while I was doing CrossFit where I was tracking on my macros and trying to hit about like at least 140 grams per day. Um, But then like I fell off it because I I didn't really feel like it was necessary, but it was. Um, I just didn't weigh how important that was appropriately. So it sounds obvious, but I'm pretty sure most beginners and I see a lot of them, you know, I, I go to commercial gyms all the time and like half the people there, you know, they're doing exercises wrong, the form's wrong. God knows what else they're doing wrong. Some of them, you know, they're going to the gym once a week or once a month or, and, you know, the technique's awful. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're also not getting enough protein in. So even if you know it, it doesn't mean you're doing it. So that's one, the first big thing I learned despite, you know, the the, the coaching. Second thing was just the, it was more of a confirmation of what I already knew, but it, it really emphasized that, which is you have to do a bodybuilding focused, higher rep range exercise training modality if you want to gain size. And in addition to that, you have to hit leg day. So that's like two lessons in one. And what I was doing before this was, you know, the five years of CrossFit and the typical workouts I would get on typical CrossFit day would be a strength portion, which usually involves rep ranges in the one to three range. And it would usually involve just like, you know, four to three to five sets of like two movements. And I was usually like clean and jerks and snatches. And then the second half would be some type of wad workout, workout of the day. Otherwise, you know, a metcon is another term for it, metabolic conditioning. And that usually involves a lot of running, high intensity interval training, you know, burpees, box jumps, kettlebell swings. Now, as you can imagine, while that may be good conditioning for my heart and, you know, a few muscles in the upper body, um, for strength and for Olympic weightlifting movements, that is really not going to be a full holistic body workout um, to really maximize my gains. And so um, the workout I was prescribed by this new coach, Goku Flex, it was very standard bodybuilding. It's not that different from many of the other ebooks that you buy online about bodybuilding. So, you know, it, there's nothing special about it in that way. Um, so, if anything, it was confirmation that, yeah, this is what you have to do. And so that just kind of confirmed, okay, yeah, he got his body like this. I got to do the same rep ranges. Now, it sounds obvious, but, um, you know, I think there's just like a lot of competing motivations and biases especially when you're in CrossFit. You know, I uh, I had coaches and, you know, I'm still friends with these coaches, but, you know, um, the head coach at my gym and, and some others, you know, they would recommend stick with CrossFit. So, you know, look at me. I did CrossFit. Look, look how muscular I am. And, you know, spend, if you want to do some more hypertrophy, higher rep ranges, do that supplementary outside of your workout. And, you know, maybe do a, do a little bit more rep ranges during CrossFit. That never really worked out because I'm already spending like, uh, you know, 20 to 30 minutes commuting to and fro from CrossFit. The class itself is usually an hour, 15 minutes, and it could go longer with warm up and stretches afterwards that I do on my own. Then the supplementary workout, we're talking like two and a half hours to get a unoptimized workout. Whereas if you do something like bodybuilding, the reason they do rep ranges in the 8 to 12 range is because you can just pump out much more volume in the same amount of time. 2 to 3x, uh, 
as you would if you were to do one to three or one to five rep ranges. It's just simple math. And volume in this context is defined as the weight you lift times the reps times the sets and in the total sum of all of that for per exercise. And, you know, you're just going to be able to hit a lot more body parts with a lot more rep ranges. I mean, three sets of eight reps, I mean, times uh, the, the weight, it's just going to be so much more in a condensed amount of time frame in terms of volume moved versus anything you could do almost with the typical strength training of CrossFit. And while it seems obvious to me now, you know, uh, you know, I did CrossFit for so many different reasons, one for the friendship and community, but, you know, people, you know, some, some coaches was telling me, stick with it, you'll get those gains. And I did, and it was just very frustrating when I didn't. And, um, you know, so, so there's these motivations and biases and, and that affected me to stay. And, you know, there's multiple reasons I, I was doing fitness, not just one. And I think that's another thing worth mentioning because I think a lot of people uh, jump to conclusions about why I'm doing something and what I want to achieve. For example, um, I did a quick uh, YouTube video when I first signed on with Goku Flex just to kind of give you give my thoughts on it when I first started my training with him. And I got one nasty comment saying, hate to break it to you, sweetheart. This was a dude, um, a semi-anonymous dude, but you could tell from his photo it was a man. And he was just like, hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but that guy takes steroids. You're not going to look like him. Which, you know, just goes to show you how quickly he jumped to false conclusions about the coach as well as me and how nasty and kind of small-minded these YouTube comments get. First off, he's assuming that my goals are to look exactly like this, you know, almost competition-ready bodybuilding coach. I never in that video at all said anything along those lines or really touched on my goals that much. He jumped to conclusions about that. Um, and so, you know, that in and of itself is an error. Uh, and he's wrong. You know, that was not my goal at all. To, I, I, I don't have any intention of looking exactly like him or anything close to that. Um, one of my many goals is to, uh, in that fitness realm, is to get better and, and more aesthetic and, and have more size and be more defined and lose, lose some, some weight. Um, but that's, that on its own was far off. And then there's multiple other fitness and health goals in terms of energy, in terms of living healthier, living longer, uh, just living a, and eating healthier. And I think I achieved a lot of those things. And there's other goals that, you know, I don't need to elaborate on. I mean, that's my personal thing. So, um, you know, just check yourself before you jump to conclusions. Um, and I think I did achieve some of that because um, I did find myself eating a lot healthier. And now that the coaching is done, I, I feel like I'm still maintaining that so far. Because when you get such strict macros like that, um, like I was given, I mean, you are limited to lean meats, fish, vegetables, and stuff like that. So I think my diet got a lot better. I was eating out a lot more and just eating whatever I wanted before I started coaching with him because I've always been blessed with a high metabolism. Uh, as a as a kid, you know, in church, I had this reputation for being the guy who would just eat anything because we at, at our church we had these these lunch buffets. It was like this uh, Chinese church and. We would order catered food from a restaurant after service. And so, you know, because I would help serve the food and man the station, I got all the leftovers and my plate would be piled high. So ever since I was young, I, I could eat whatever I wanted. I had just this high metabolism. And so that was another thing I'm very proud of. Um, I was able to be so disciplined and through my own will match those macros. I mean, I think that's more my me than the coach. Um, I and you know this is another reason why I don't think his coaching was worth it for you, um, and why I think you may be better off finding a different coach because I didn't really get the sense of support. I don't I don't feel like he really cared or he had much emotional support or was cheering me on or 
any of that. Uh, or he really addressed how I was doing. You know, I, I tried a few times to reach out to him and say, you know, hey, I, I'm really struggling to meet these. I'm come once again, as a reminder, I, I'm coming from this from a point where I would eat whatever I wanted. I would eat out before this. So it's I'm struggling to hit these macros. It's 160 grams of protein, 70 grams of fat, 250 carbs. And then those got cut as the weeks went on. Uh, so it was really tough. But, you know, one example of a response he would always give just to kind of concisely explain was like five words. Search social media for recipes. Like that was his response. Like he didn't give recipes himself or ideas. Um, and, you know, he he gave me a, gave me a couple training videos that he filmed off his YouTube channel um, to kind of start when we first started. And I think one of them went over how he recommends a flat, if it fits your macros, eating diet. And his whole philosophy there was, I want to teach you how to fish, you know. So whatever fits your macros, you know, you choose, you experiment. It's different for everyone. Go do it. Now, I understand that. But, I mean, at least show some effort. Give me some ideas. Oh, try to fish. Maybe you could try this, like, cheese that has low fat. None of that. It was just check YouTube for recipe ideas. Basically telling me to figure it out myself. So it was just really difficult, especially as someone who has always kind of sucked at cooking and, you know, out of necessity, especially during the pandemic a few years ago, I had to learn to cook, but I, I still wasn't that good on it. So I really felt I could have used more support there. I didn't get it. So I'm proud of myself for figuring it out. And by by God, I, as I, I did. Um, and that leads me to my third lesson, which is, you know, I, I learned so much about, I tried so many different things. And some things didn't work. Maybe different things would work for you. But now I have this whole list. And I still don't think I'm a good cook. But at least I have some options. So the things that didn't work for me were protein powder um, or smoothies. I, I still have yet to give up on smoothies. But I haven't found a smoothie that actually tastes good after you mix in that protein powder. Uh, what's worked for me, Greek yogurt is great. High protein Zero fat. I mean, it's it's like a godsend. Shrimp is also like that. So I love shrimp. Um, I'll do salmon from time to time, but like the the fat's pretty high on that. Um, I really like chicken thigh over like dry, lean chicken breast. But I found a way to transition the chicken breast because I really can't do chicken thighs anymore because it's just so high in fat. So the way I found to do it is like breaded chicken breasts. There's a brand called uh, Just Bear that has like almost the same macros as just original chicken, but it's breaded like like you know Chick Fil A's chicken. So I really like that. Um, and you know sometimes I like beef jerky. I like uh, roast beef, uh, pastrami beef, and then there's certain uh, refrigerated or frozen. Uh, meals that I found were pretty good as well. There's this one brand called Suki's that you know sells a variety of Indian cuisines that have really good macros that are low in fat and high in protein. And then you know beef pot roast is another uh, often go to. Um, and then chicken sausages. So I found some go tos that I just keep kept going to. And then you know um, I also found some. Uh, options in like Chick-fil-A uh, that I could eat or squeeze in for a little bit. Um, like the, you know, Chick-fil-A sandwich minus the the bread or um, one ice cream cone actually only has like five grams of fat. So what I found was I could still squeeze in a little treat for myself every day without going insane. So there was that. Um, but yeah, in general, I just felt like there, I wouldn't recommend Matt Keto's program to you just because, as mentioned, there was a lot of issues uh, with how I felt the coaching was too minimal and transactional. And that's just my opinion. 
For others, maybe that's enough. Maybe they only need two texts or one text a week from him. And frankly, I think he's never, I think he's been an online coach for his whole life. He hasn't had a real corporate job. So the level of formality and efficiency and, you know, service with his texts, I, I think he just never had that training. So, you know, I don't think he, he realizes, uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't just like spell a, everything in lowercase and like not have periods and not f- have full sentences because he's never had to. And then that's probably his baseline. Um, in his final message, one of his final messages to me, um, it was in that audio I mentioned where, you know, he got kind of offended. He was, he, he said to me, and frankly, you spend the most time out of any of my clients. And the funny thing is, I checked, I, I went back and I checked my messages for the last like four weeks. And I counted them. I looked at the messages. It was literally like, one one message a week, and then maybe one question. And the question could have been answered in like 10 seconds. So, and I have the proof. I, I have it filmed. I have the screenshots. I, um, if anyone's curious, uh, I'll, um, you know, I have that footage and, and those screenshots saved. Um, but if you, if you look at that, that means, you know, either one, he was exaggerating. He wasn't telling the truth in that moment just because, he was upset with me and he was just saying I, I spend more time than others or he is telling the truth and to that that means that all the other clients and his expectation is that you barely text him and you barely expect any text back like one or two texts at most and I have the proof too so, like, if anyone's really dead set on seeing it, you know, you can reach out to me on my blog. And, you know, I'll post some pictures and screenshots on the blog version of this podcast episode. But, you know, if you want, like, all the details, reach out to me. You can contact me um, all through my blog and on the Contact Us page. Or, you know, just reply to any email I send in my email newsletter. And I'll get back to you with, like, you know, further evidence, but point being, okay, assuming in the second possibility where assuming he's right and I I do spend more time than anyone else to that, you know, I apologize, but that also means that's an expectation that I wasn't clear on. It was, it was never before I purchased the program. It was never like, and even like in the first few weeks, it was never like you can only send two text messages a week it was like hey i'm readily available most of the day if you have questions via text message so that expectation wasn't set clearly and it was you know almost communicated passive aggressively you know i i would have rather just heard that up front otherwise it's kind of like a bait and switch now of course you know i understand that you know you're frustrated when you been coaching for years and you have this expectation or this baseline that you can get away with two or three text messages a week with the client and any more than that is ridiculous but from the landscape and lens of just rational reasonable fair coaching I mean if if you were hire a live coach who you visit and you see in person, in the gym. He's going to spend like an hour with you, there with you, staring, talking to you, guiding you through the exercises. He's not going to be like, oh yeah, you can text me. You you get like two minutes of my time per week. So I wouldn't say, you know, his standard is a, I don't think his standard is a universal standard. And so I think his, you know, a lot of his frustration about how, often I was annoying him, came from his own set standard of expectations, not what the world typically expects rationally of a, you know, fair, reasonable amount of coaching investment. So that's that. Um, 
And uh, yeah, in general, I think those are the big things I learned. I learned I just got to hit my macros. I need to keep my macros down and, and adjust them lower to lose weight. Um, I got to get that protein in. I got to really hit all those exercises using a high rep range exercise scheme. And I got to stop skipping a leg day if I want the full body experience. And I think the the another reason why I still think in this case it was worth it for me despite all the issues, but I would not recommend it to you and I wouldn't go back and do coaching with them again um, is because I spent so much money that I just felt accountable to like get it done. I was like, you know, I spent so much. I, I don't care if the coaching isn't great. I got to make this work. I'm accountable to myself. Now, initially in the first few weeks, I, I felt accountable to Goku Flex as well. I was like, oh, I, I, want, I don't want to let him down. I want to make him proud. But as time went by and I realized how transactional and non-human the coaching was, it became more about, you know, just me and like, well, I want to make sure I don't waste this money. So I'm at least going to follow this program. And it was tough. It was really tough. Like I mentioned, uh, I'm very proud of myself because I came from a beginner mindset and from habits of eating whatever I wanted, eating out often to hitting these macros uh, more or less every week. Now, I mean, may have been off by five grams here or there, but generally I was on on par. So I was really proud of myself. Um, he also prescribes cardio. So my cardio went up every week as well. I had to do three sessions of 300 calories burned each per week by the end. And then, you know, I was also doing a lot of hiking for leisure. And he told me anything outside of the gym that's cardio doesn't get counted. So on top of like 900 calories of cardio, you know, I was sometimes hiking like 10 plus miles a week for leisure, but I wanted to do it. Um, and so, you know, there was all of that. So I'm really proud of myself. Um, after this program, I think while I would like to, you know, stick to his macros, I think they're just a little too, too much. And, you know, while I asked him about sustainability and stuff, you know, the thing is, a lot of times he would push push it off and say, save the questions for after you're coaching with me to the end. So he didn't answer them. He would defer them. And then on the last week, you know, he gave me a short answer. He was like, you know, just adjust them down if you feel like you're plateauing. So I was like, okay, um, thanks, I guess. And so, yeah, that's that's what I got. So, you know, I learned that if I want to keep losing weight, I basically eat less and exercise more by, you know, adjusting those macros, specifically fats and carbs, down even further. And, um, you know, it was a lot already. So um, I do feel like I'll probably have to find something more sustainable. Um, I think... There was a little bit of heart from him. So um, he did give me a cheat week, um, but he told me not to binge. So this was probably halfway. So maybe end of my second month with him. And he just told me, you know, hey, uh, this week you can eat what you want, but, you know, don't binge. And that week, you know, my fats went up to about 100 grams per day. And yeah, I did enjoy it. And so that was week where my carbs probably went up to like 300 grams and yeah my protein stayed the same but yeah uh so he's he said uh, uh that does kind of erode your gains in, in weight loss but you know you know, do it if you need to so honestly um i just feel like it was a really strict and maybe it wasn't for him um he told me other clients get it done even though they have kids and they're traveling and they have a busy schedule so um, it's really tough. Nonetheless, I, I don't think the average person could have done what I did. And, you know, despite the kind of lack of compassion at times, because that's kind of what I got. You know, I got that suck it up kind of response sometimes. You know, I got the response of my other clients have no problem with this. 
They travel just like you. They have kids. They have family. They have a very demanding job. So don't use those those excuses. And so while that kind of suck it up response works for some people, I think for others like myself, I would have benefited with some empathy and encouragement and just human care. And I think that's the key thing. I don't feel like he really cared. It was it was a very transactional relationship as summarized by his short text message responses. So it was kind of a different feel to him than when I got from his YouTube videos where he's really friendly, where sometimes he'll coach people live. So, you know, he had this series with a uh, local that lived near him and who he nicknamed Panda. And they were always in the gym together, joking around, exercising. And it just felt like a, re- a real friendship and it was everything was casual and fun. And that's the vibe and persona I get from his YouTube videos. You would expect that now that you're paying him for his time and stuff, you would get more of that. But instead you get like a very thin sliver and less of that. And it's less human and more kind of robotic. But it is what it is. You know, he probably structured it how he was to scale up as much as possible, spend the least amount of time per client and make the most money. So, you know, I think with that just comes some trade-offs. So that's that's what he decided. We'll see if it that actually works out in the long run. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just be honest. And I think it's very fair for someone to be a customer and leave a review online. I mean, that's just the norm on the internet. So I think it's fair, everything I said. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what you get with him. So um, all in all, I do feel that um, I did see some gains. So I will post some before and after photos in the blog version of this podcast episode. Um, you can check that out on my blog, dreamlifelab.org. For older podcast listeners, you may be surprised about that. But yes, we have changed domain names on my website. And I wrote a whole blog post explaining why and stuff like that. But that's the new website name, dreamlifelab.org. Um, but yeah, uh, if you look at that, um, I personally see some gains in lean mass all around my body. Um, clearly, the fat levels went down. I had a belly um, with a lot of weight, and then that's gone down a lot. The funny thing is when I have my shirt on, I just look skinny. Like People don't really see the, the bulging belly, um, and I could eat whatever I want, but I was really skinny fat. And uh, through this dieting and training, I think I have started to recomposition my body. So these three months, um, they're not the end of the journey. They're just a start, a a fresh leaf. And uh, I've seen some gains. I'm progressing forward. I still learned a lot from this. Although, like I mentioned, it did leave a bad taste in my mouth in certain ways. Um, But, you know, I learned a lot about nutrition. I learned a lot about exercise. And, you know, I, I think... It just reaffirmed a lot of things. Um, a lot of it was just confirmation, honestly. You know, some of the questions I asked him was were really just answered with, yeah, you're right, or yeah, it doesn't matter. For example, I would ask, can I just do machine version of these exercises? Is the form and technique right? And I would send him like a quick video, and his response was always like, yeah, that's fine. You know, these short responses. So, it was just kind of confirmation that what I was suspecting is correct. And then um, I think the last bit it, I want to say is that I did um, ask him uh, about the certain like more advanced like bits of knowledge. Just because I was that tra- theory junkie who would watch hundreds of fitness YouTube videos a day. I mean, anyone else like me, knows Athlean X, a big YouTube channel. I watched him a lot. And so I just gained all this like tangential niche knowledge. For example, you know, in his warm-up video he sent me at the start of our training, 
he tells you to like basically foam roll out your entire body and um you know you, you have to do f full body for lower when it's a leg day uh just a upper half if it's the upper day usually um and that's that's the general uh context like if technically it's you know leg day it's like uh legs down and then upper upper body day it's waist up but like there's some convergence is my point but anyhow um i messaged him because i'd seen from an athlete next video and this guy athlete next is a personal trainer he's a he's a licensed physical therapist he knows what he's talking about he has that science he has posted a video saying you should never roll out your low back because you don't have your your skeletal muscles your rib cage to support that so that's a dangerous zone and you know I, I brought it up briefly hey I saw a video that you shouldn't roll out your lower back his response was it's fine you can roll that out so you know either I'm overthinking it and you really don't have to worry about it and you can roll out your lower back and that's what I did you know I rolled out my lower back or I know stuff little tangential stuff here and there as a theory junkie that he doesn't. And that's the thing. I learned that you don't need to know all these little niche things and hundreds of hours of content online. You just need to hit the basics and get those gains. And that's what Matt Keto did. Um, this guy looks super jacked and um, yeah, he, he doesn't have extensive knowledge in every area um and so th that was one example of a few where you know that was his response that's all he had to say and maybe he he was wrong but um another thing you have to know is like when you're doing a, a training like this and you're a theory junkie you will hit multiple points of conflicting advice and what i did and i think this is the best approach is to just Go with what the person you paid with said. You're not here to argue with him. Oh, but he said this. He did, said this. Just do the experiment fully by just listening to him. And even if there's conflicting advice, you paid for this guy. You trust this guy. He's he's the guy you think out of anyone looks the best and maybe has the best advice. So even if someone else says differently, just go with him for now. Now that the coaching is done, I can investigate further about that foam rolling lower back thing but you know it's minor here and there and you know that I forgot to address the point about that accusation about him taking steroids you know I followed him for many years he's claimed he's natural and I believe him I know it's it's kind of hard to tell for sure online these days but um I have probably followed him much longer than that anonymous YouTube comment. That guy maybe just discovered him after I posted a video. Who knows? And made a snap judgment. He didn't post any evidence that this guy was taking steroids. So he's just making an unfounded conclusion. From what I say, you trust someone's word. And this guy, you know, he's he's been, you know, just straightforward and honest for the most part. So I think he's natural. So to that, uh, that's what I've described. Once again, this guy's been working out for like 20 plus years. It makes sense he has a body like that. So um, regardless, I think I'm not trying to look exactly like him. So the lessons learned are still going to be great. Even if, you know, I don't get to that body level. That was never my goal. And uh, yeah, that's basically it with the video. Um, I could talk about this for a lot longer. Excuse me, I said video. That's it with this podcast episode. I could talk a lot longer, but I think I've hit the highlights. So anything else I say will start to get redundant. Um, if there's any further questions that are positive and not, you know, accusatory or, or nasty or, or mean, feel free to reach out and ask them and I'll be happy to answer. But I think I hit the bulk of what you need to know. And my review of Goku Flex and the three-month fitness coaching program, my first ever fitness coaching program 
with any coach. I'm still glad I did it. Now I have an experience. A lot of people just kind of wait on the sidelines forever and never take action and never invest. And I think I'm still farther ahead and better off despite the issues with it. And, you know, one day I'll probably, with the lessons learned, find a more interactive, better coach. Um, But now with this episode, you can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make the same issues. Find some coach that's more interactive, more invested in you, and you may be better off that way. Um, I think for now, uh, this la- these last three months have been really tough. Um, if you've been following my blog, you know that I've, I've been traveling a lot too. So I did this whole program while traveling and constantly having to be on the road and cook and, you know, be at a different gym. But I made it happen. So um, I'm a bit drained. So I won't be getting a new coach in a while. I think I've learned enough that I can go on on my own for the next few months at least. Maybe the next few years. But, you know, after that, I think it could be nice to try out another coach. So thanks for listening. I'll see you later.